library board presentation. Uh, library board chair uh, Michelle Mayer here uh, to give an update from the public library board. Good evening. Yeah, please join us here. <laughs> I'm Scott Gilbert, the uh, one of the two newest library board members, a veteran of one meeting. Excellent. It's nice to see you. Thanks for picking me. Uh, thank you both uh, for being here tonight. Uh, Michelle, did you have some opening remarks? Or? Um, I want to make sure everybody had gotten Can you just speak hand right hand into the microphone? I want to make sure everybody had gotten the handout. Let's pull it over to you. I want to make sure everybody had gotten the handout kind of demonstrates our accomplishments for the past year, year and a half. One of the things it does include is a plan that we do every year, which is the strategic plan, which has been changed to the action plan, kind of sets the goal of where we want library pro programs to focus for the following year, and we do review and update that annually. Um, at the end of the year, we have, it, it just, you'll see at the end is last year's, at the end of the year, um, under each goal is how each goal was met for that year. If anyone had any questions about what they saw? Sure, questions or comments from council? Go ahead. I just want to say um, it is a pleasure working with this group. Everyone is really active, and welcome, Scott. You and I think Claire Lee are the new members, so we're really excited that board and uh, it's a really active group and um, I wanted to mention specifically all the other cool things that the library does um, outside of just providing books and knowledge. Um, this past weekend they had a DIY fair. I would be curious to hear about that later how it um, how it turned out and also I don't know if any of you have heard but they the library now offers a um, state uh, park pass and a backpack. You can check out with your library card a park pass to visit state parks and it has cool things in the backpack like uh, binoculars and things to help you on your park adventure. So um, just want to remind li um, us how cool our library is and that uh, we offer a lot of things outside of just your typical books and downloads. And thank you for putting this strategic plan together uh, or action plan. I really love going to the meetings each month and seeing um, the steps that we've taken towards our goals. I think that's really exciting. Question on the uh, state park program then. Did you say it was just equipment or did you say there's some uh, admission help? It's a backpack that you can check out and it comes with a, p a pass to the state park and um, I think binoculars and like field guides maybe. I'm not sure all of the details that are in there. Huh. Very cool. It's a really neat kind of extra So you, if you want to reserve one, you'll want to call Dorothy and her team and reserve one. Quick question. Please, go ahead. So I, the last um, goal is to enhance an understanding of the city's history, and um, I, which I'm really glad to see that as one of the goals. It's very cool. Is there very much, I mean, it doesn't say anything here about the Englewood Historic Society, but I know that you all have been, I know that Dorothy's allowed them to use rooms over and over, and maybe there's things still stored too, right, in some of your offices there, but what yeah, Right now, it, it's focusing on cataloging what we have, making sure it's in proper order, um, and we are trying to look into budgeting to have electronic copies for forever storage of it, because mm -hmm. so many of the things are, are getting to the point where if too many people handle them, they would fall apart but we want to make sure to have those for generations to come still. Is there any um, ability and maybe a capacity to do any collecting of, of audio stories or stories of, and this would probably take some staff time to do this, but. Um, Is there any way to do that? Okay. Well, sure, yeah, I'll sit right next to you. <laughs> Pull up another Sorry. chair. Sorry. Yeah, you got another chair. Pull that one down, yeah, please, please. Um, we do have uh, quite a rich trove of um, oral histories. Um, they're on cassette tapes, um, which is one reason we're, yeah. we're trying to figure out a way to get Convert. into the electronic um, universe. 
Um, so those are in our local history archives um, and really not accessible to, to folks. They're not well cataloged and that's part of the goal so that people know what we have and how to access it. Do you have the equipment to um, transfer those into digital form? No, but uh, the Marmot team is working oh, on okay. that. That's, you know, I mean, it's like, let's not reinvent the wheel. Yeah. They, they've got the equipment that will help to transcribe it, but we're sharing it among all the different libraries, hence, you know, some of the delay in making that happen. But it's going to be a very economical way to get that job done. The reason why I was asking is, asking is thinking that it, you might have some volunteers who could help with it, but it would have to have the kind of no, at, at that at that point, we definitely can use volunteers. That would be a wonderful project. So. I would imagine the Historic Society would help them by example. I'm not volunteering them, but <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> all right. And now that I have the microphone, <laughs> I I have to say that the the library board meetings um, are long, thoughtful discussions. Uh, they're very very engaged, and I can't thank the citizens enough for their interest and support of the library and. You know, sometimes they push back, saying why not, we shouldn't be doing this, we should be doing that. So um, if any of you would ever like to come to any of those meetings, in addition to Amy, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions or comments from council? <coughs> Go ahead, Amy. I also want to brag about them a little bit more. Um, they're also really good at collaborating with the other boards and commissions, which I think is really cool. They worked with um, the Christian Arts Commission on bringing Prometheus back. I know we all probably I think that the uh, document you provided in, in today's uh, uh, materials uh, is, is something that we can use as an example for a lot of our other boards and commissions. So thank you guys for your efforts. I appreciate it. Okay, moving on to agenda item two that is our financial report. Finance and Administrative Services Director Kathleen Wrinkles here to uh, discuss the June uh, monthly and quarterly financial reports. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Member. Oh, people, excuse me. <laughs> right. So, in your packet, you have two versions. Thank you. Am I better? Can you hear me now? Okay. This is a commercial. I do. So, in your in your packet, you've got two versions. This time, we have the full version of the monthly report and the abbreviated version. So I'm going to walk through the abbreviated version and see if that is comfortable to you, if there's more that you'd like to have in there, and uh, then we can go from there. It uh, does present, I, we would say, the key items that let you know if we're on target, off target, or need to, to make some changes. So with that, starting on page 10 of 51, if you're looking at your document on the computer, we start with the June year-to-date city fund summary. What this does, it gives you our beginning balance, the year-to-date revenues and expenditures that we've seen, other sources and uses, uses being mostly our, uh, our commitments. So if we've got a, a purchase order or something in, in uh, tow, we'll show this as being reserved for that. And then any, any restricted balances we have so that you can see where our year-to-date ending balance is. Now, if you take a look, I'm going to point to the capital project funds as kind of an example. You can see that our other sources and uses put us a little bit negative on the MYCP, which is our capital projects fund, and that's because the transfer in hasn't occurred yet, so we do have some timing differences here. Okay. Any thoughts or questions on that? Walks through the enterprise funds and the internal service funds. Thank you. Questions or comments? Um, I, I know the CP is capital funds and multiple year. year. Multiple year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you mean an acronym cheat sheet? <laughs> <laughs> well, we look 
looking at the proprietary funds now. Um, <coughs> the is the employee benefits, um, do they normally come out with a negative number? And I'm going to say no. No, we do have some transfers in that will occur based on billing, and those haven't happened yet. It's a timing issue. Okay, so it's just negative right now, but... Correct. Okay. happens at the uh, end of the uh, the first half and we've we readjust the budget the way we address it. I will ask Kevin if he will help me with that for the for the benefits. Sorry. The primary reason it's negative is that our health insurance payments are required to be made one month ahead of time. And that's about 400000 I was still trying, I was still trying to win here. I, was, I apologize. It's that okay. That mic's not going to pick it up. It's been having a lot of trouble. Uh, it, it, the primary reason is our health um, insurance payments are required to be made one month ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And that's about 400000 mm -hmm. a month. But as you're making that, you have transfers in of people who are paying. So... That's why it's a concern that it's a negative, because if it's a negative, then what are you going to pay? How are you going to pay it next month? It, it depends on how the timing, when, when payroll hits, uh, as far as the end of the month and when we make the payment. Mm -hmm. So it comes from all the other funds, but it depends on when payroll is posted. And what is your normal swing on that? I mean, I could understand if there was a delay piece in there and it had just been paid, but you don't seem to know the timing of it or the process and I need to know whether the amount that's coming in you know is going to be able to pay what you owe if you're paying it a month in advance. Yes, we, that's that's handled as part of the budget in the beginning of the year. Pardon? That's handled as part of the budget at the beginning of the year. We know how much our health insurance uh, premiums are okay. and then we divide that out by the 26 pay periods that we have during the year. If that was the case and you divided it up by the 26 then you would already Okay. Is there a way that you could get a little bit more information for Councilmember Russell's question about what that schedule is and how you handle it and when that's going in? Because it is a concern to see that any kind of benefits program like that being in a negative. So if you just give us the information so that we know a, a little bit more of an answer than just that scheduled at, you know, budgeted at the beginning of the year doesn't create the negative piece of it. So if there is a legitimate timing issue, if you could provide that a little more information that makes sense would uh, be appreciated. Certainly. Thanks. Thank you, Rita. And that necessarily wasn't my question, although when I was, w it, 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 yes, in some ways it is. When I was running um, two years ago, there was an unfunded um, liability for the pension fund. And so I guess it is my concern that there will be funds there. Um, and that it shows a negative number. Um, so, I mean, that is a little bit concerning. It's an encumbrance, right? We have an encumbrance. It's basically a prepayment. So how do you know we pay it? We don't do accruals on a monthly basis, so that's why there's a timing. Okay. Other questions or comments from Council? None, please continue on. Okay, for this second page, which is page 11 of 51, we've got the um, year-to-date revenues and expenditures. You've seen this chart. It's in the main uh, book as well. In fact, all these charts are. We just pulled out what we thought were the most important. This one right now, our revenues are exceeding our expenditures by $1.1 million, and that compares to where we were last year of 777000 it is where we expect to be based on our budget. And so when you take a look at where our current year-end projections, we're expecting to be basically right on budget at maybe a $7,000 variance. Pretty close. Authority tax, a property tax check? I would have to look at the detail. I don't have that with me. I, I only reason I asked, I was there today and they said they just made their tax payments 
should be looking for a check soon from them. Okay. Thank you. Next chart. We've got the general fund revenues, and this breaks it down by the type of revenue, where the budget is, where we are, and what percent of budget we've received. And it also takes a look back at 15 for the same period. So we're 50% complete, and we've received 51.9% of the revenue we expected to receive. Quick question. Did we update the uh, year-end estimates for both revenues and expenses? N Not yet, because we just got that data in, okay. and we will be bringing that to you next month. Next month. Okay. Thank you. Any okay. questions on this? No. We've got the general fund expenditures, same sort of structure. And we are 49%, which is better than we expect it to be, because at 50% of the year, you'd like to be somewhere around 50%. We're a little better than that. Down below that, it talks about the general fund transfers, what's been transferred out to date and where it's been transferred. say that uh, obviously in 2016 we were able to transfer out a substantial amount, do substantial, substantial amount of public improvement work. Um, last year, I want to say over $3 million, does that sound correct? Um, and, uh, you know, we've got a few public improvement projects that we're thinking about, and uh, so just want to highlight that, you know, we spent $3 million last year, but uh, so this year I should say something like that. The next page, page 5, which is 14 of 51, talks through the general fund balance. Their fund balance is right now in a good spot at 19.96% of the revenue projection, and our adopted policy target 167 next page talks about the um, sales and use tax by business area. The area that we've been most interested in is area 7. And although we're still lower than we expected to be at about half a million, we've actually gained, gained some ground. We came up 74,000 from where we were last May, or last month, May. So we're starting to gain a little ground there, hoping to gain some more. That's really good news. Starting to get concerned about uh, some of those collections. Absolutely. <coughs> and then the last page, well, pretty much the last page of the document, um, has got the areas and it's got a little bit more explanation as to what's going on in each one. Talks. There's an explanation below the chart that talks about area seven, and also area one where we're doing better than we expected. Other questions or comments from council? Again, this is the abbreviated version, and I'm hoping it gives you the information you need. If there's more that you need, I would sure like to build that in for you. Yes, ma'am. So <coughs> is this maybe what we're looking at getting instead of the full report that? For the off-quarter months. The quarter months will still produce the full quarter. In fact, next month, the, even though it is an off month, we'll produce the full quarter full packet because we will be uh, having the adjusted numbers that we've we've gotten our forecast to you okay so is there what is the reasoning for cutting back on the information you still have to generate all of that information every time correct it's it's the amount of time it takes to put the packet together and how much detail you really need to be able to say we're in a good financial spot or we're not I mean, we still want to provide that other detail, but it doesn't change that drastically month to month. So we'd like to produce that just on the quarter because it does take us a little bit of extra time to do that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Another thing I like uh, is on page 27 to 51, it shows our cumulative graph. And I know our public some years ago was concerned when it was below the it's always good to show that it's still trailing way up there. That's because uh, I know the public does download this packet as well. If we could keep that in the abbreviated, that would be extremely helpful. Absolutely. To show that we, you know, sometimes it could sound bad. Uh, the cumulative.
if it shows exactly the kind of number it is. So. Okay, we can do that. Page ten on the long one, right? Right. Page ten on the long one, right? It's a nice graphic. Yeah. And the last one, right? Yeah. One of the things I do for the monthly reports, or is in my community meetings, I do print off. I generally use that last page of what we're now calling the quarterly report that shows, you know, this year's, you know, revenues and expenses as well as the last couple of years, and try to give them an idea. And I suppose that's not really changing. I could still be printing that off, but you know, I think one of the things maybe to think about is, you know, a single page kind of takeaway for those type of public events. Just food for thought. Okay. Well, I used to use the front page with all the summaries. Exactly, and now it's stretched over a couple pages. Because it gave a visual, so it's a little bit more to have to copy now. In some ways. Exactly, and so I agree. I used to use the verbal one as well, and then that got extended to more than one page. And so again, what I'm looking for is more of a snapshot that's a one pager that I can hand out at some of my events and things. So just be aware that sometimes the how big it is or how many pages it takes up really affects how we're disseminating it. But honestly, I'll work with whatever you provide. I think it is plenty of information for me to look at. And again, maybe I could just be printing off that quarterly page. But the quarterly page being this front one? No, that I usually use the last page of the spreadsheet that's got all the different line items for the last couple years. But not the last one over here. This one? No. Like purple and that one. That one. Okay. Or the one right in front of that. Okay. It's not the last page of the one. did both the expenses and the income all in one page, and I used to use that as well. And so now I feel like I'm losing a little bit of information that's up to date on a monthly basis that's available on a one page. But again, I'll work with whatever you provide, honestly. Now it's green. Oh, that's right. It is green. That's our color, though, so I like that. Good call. I usually do the black and white version just to save on ink. We'll work to see how we can build that in for you. Thank you. Other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, why don't we move on to expense reduction analyst and cost and payment discussion. Again, Finance Administrative Services Director Kathleen Rinkle is here to present and discuss expense reduction analyst and cost and payment. We also have a guest, I believe, this evening. We have a guest, John Jordan. And John, if you'd like to come up. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Please join us at the table here. We'll go around and introduce ourselves. Dugan, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off on the introductions. Peter Russell, Council Member at Large. Rick Gillick, Mayor Pro Tem, New York. Joe Jefferson, Mayor and District 1, welcome. Eric Keck, City Manager. Steve Yates at Large. Linda Olson, District 2. Again, we'll turn it over to you. Yeah, we're going to quiz you on this at the end. And and actually, I'm going to turn this over to Eric because he's got the most experience with the group and knows some of the personnel. So, thank you, Mayor and Council. This particular topic is being brought forward as a an important component of our operational plan, and that component is to look at cost containment to look at process and procedure with how we deal with things such as procurement. Uh, obviously, there are a number of things that staff's been doing to work on uh, cost containment, but one of the areas in which we feel that there is quite a bit of, of room for uh, enhancement is um, with how we do procurement here at the city. We have a number of departments, as you're aware, that uh, have, in many cases, purchased disparately um, and not in any coordinated fashion. We have one individual who's our pro procurement manager, Alicia Stutz, and I think she does a, a great job for managing what she does with trying to purchase things that we need from time to time. However, there has not been a uh, concerted effort, uh, and she doesn't have to have the bandwidth or the help to, mi to make this uh, uh, work with respect to looking at all of our purchasing and looking at trying to get a, a giant market basket, if you will, 
that has things that we require all of our departments to purchase. So, for example, just a simple issue um, with office supplies. You know, many departments purchase from whatever vendor they feel like they want to, and so some will go to Office Depot, some will go to Staples, some will purchase from other independent agencies, and so no one has really gone forth and done a, a master RFP, if you will, to look at the acquisition of goods that uh, you know could help. Uh, my experience. Um, has been, and actually in the private sector, we've worked with, I've worked with them in the ERA in the past, expense reduction analysts in northern Idaho in the manufacturing business. And uh, I know Mr. Jordan's probably got better statistics, but when I was there, um, in, you know, implementing this particular program, we saved about $300,000 in three months um, by working with them to specifically with their experts. They have many experts in, in many different areas that you'll hear about tonight. Well, they'll go in and they'll go out to the, the market on the behalf of the en entity, in this case the city, and we'll uh, look at who we use today. They'll go out and, and look at relationships that they have, and they'll set out an RFP for the products that we're looking to purchase. They will then present that back to the city and say, we believe that we can save the city X dollars um, if you were to purchase from this particular vendor. And uh, there is a contingent fee base where they actually s share in the savings over a period of time. However, again, um, looking at the work that it takes for us to do RFPs, and, and they have um, offices across the country that they'll talk about, I'm sure, tonight, that have experts in the areas of commodities, office supplies, oil and fuels, um, steel, scrap steel, you know, those types of things, and, and even everything down to telecommunications, including wireless devices. So they'll um, help in, the, in that facet of looking at many different areas and bringing back reports to the city to say, these are areas we believe we can make a savings. Uh, anywhere, you know, I didn't take any recommendations that they had if it, if it wasn't anything greater than 5%, and, and we'll work with uh, them in that fashion. And, and I think, uh, as you'll hear from Mr. Jordan tonight, he'll talk a little bit about his company, but specifically the process and how this works, and um, some of the categories in which they've already done some uh, analysis to tell us where they think they can see some savings for us as a city. Great. I'll do my best to use this. Can you hear me? Thank you. Um, I appreciate you having me in this evening. And I'll try and stay um, pretty um, flying up 30,000 feet unless you want to drop to 500 feet. So, um, Eric, that was a, a great overview. I'm not sure I have anything to add, actually. <laughs> um, so with our, and, and do I control this, the slides or how do we control those? So it's, um, you know, it's an interesting business in that our typical clients, um, and we're um, throughout the U.S. and in 29 countries around the world, um, our typical clients have done really a great job of procurement, which is a little bit counterintuitive. So Eric, um, describing uh, the job you're doing here at City of Inglewood is actually a good thing in our world. Um, if there's a whole variety of reasons why that helps us to do a better job for whoever we engage with. Um, and um, so it'll as we go through the slides, and if you could go, go to the next slide, please, um, that hopefully it'll become more apparent. Um, but uh, in uh, working with Eric and Kathy, they had suggested that we cover the following areas, um, our uh, ERA and our common findings, how we do what we do at a high level, and the opportunity that we, the potential opportunity, I should say, that we see may exist with the city of Inglewood, and then open it up for Q and A, if any. I'm happy to talk about, you know, go over wherever anybody would like. Next slide, thank you. Um, so, in our experience over the last 23 years, we've uh, found um, that there's about 10 to 30 percent of the procurement dollars being left on the table which is really kind of an, an amazing number when you think about it. But that's actually what our experience is. Um, there's a, there's a, um, some pretty good reasons for that. And um, 
there is no secret sauce here with what we do. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of analysts that are specialized, as um, Eric had mentioned. Um, and they are, we work in 44 different areas, and anything from uh, what I consider high on the food chain, things like health and benefits, uh, pension and 401k fees, and uh, through all types of um, um, IT, telecom, and then to a whole variety of things, logistics, et cetera, et cetera. But even though we work in 44 areas, those 44 areas have fragmented into over 200 subcategories. And uh, that's really why we exist, is we're, we're highly specialized. And um, it isn't economic for a standalone company, City of Inglewood, or um, a much larger organization to have 200 analysts on staff. It, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make financial sense. And that's, that's why we're here. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So this is a high-level view of how we do what we do. And um, I will, um, again, I'll stay, um, I'll fly high here, and, and please tell me if you want, would like additional detail. Um, but this is our process. We bring in um, a variety of people on every project, every project that we handle, project manager, project coordinators, and then either an analyst or an analytics team. And then we're able to um, um, execute our projects. W one thing um, that I'll point out, and when we uh, roll through much of the supply chain, when we engage with the client, um, we don't always find recover cash flows in all the areas that we work in. So it's a little different than you're probably used to. Um, and when I started doing this over seven years ago, it was very different than anything I had ever done. And that's also what makes it pretty fun. Um, but it is a little bit, I can say that in every area, area we work in, uh, you, in our view, um, our clients gain value because if we don't find dollars, we are probably going to find processes that could be changed or a recommended change um, that would be to your benefit. And the second piece of that is that um, you receive a, um, some very detailed reporting uh, uh, really explaining why you're doing the very best that you can in that area, which most companies are going to find value. So um, jumping in on the first step, and I will uh, I'll run through these ten steps uh, at relatively uh, relatively speedy here. Um, we develop a str uh, our starting point in any project is uh, developing a strategy with our client, and uh, really and it's. Uh, um, Eric, you mentioned that we do scrap metal, uh, aluminum, all types types of things. Um, and you would think in those areas you wouldn't have some a strategy for buying, you know, ten million dollars of aluminum a year, but you actually do. And in every single one of these areas, you need to lay out a, a strategy and define what that strategy is. Typically high on the list with our uh, clients is uh, bending the cost curve and actually changing what you're going to pay over the long haul. And that is becoming increasingly important in many of our areas. Um, health and benefits is an example. It's very hard to go into health and benefits, switch brokers, switch carriers every year or every two years. Uh, when you, What you really need is a, a supplier or combination of suppliers um, that are really become your partners, and they can develop and execute that long-term strategy with you. So that's number one. <coughs> number two, we um, look at the, the steps two and three are qualitative and quantitative information. The quantitative is step two, where we'll pull down and, and way too much data probably. We, we gather data up to a year, sometimes multi-years, um, in maybe in a complex area or in a very mundane area, but that's what we do. So we want to know exactly what you're buying, what you're paying, what you've been paying for the last year, broken down by month, week, whatever. And uh, the things that we uncover in doing that are pretty interesting um, and can be surprising for our clients. Third is the qualitative piece, <coughs> pardon me, which is uh, probably one of the more important pieces, which is we take a look at um, and we meet with 
all the stakeholders involved in any of these areas. And uh, that's the quality piece. So if you don't get all the quality and understand the quality elements of it, um, you simply are going to have an underperforming er uh, project or a failed project. You have to understand what quality is to your organization. Um, we as outsiders um, are asking all kinds of questions because we're outsiders. And then we're also asking questions to find out where things that you may not know and you shouldn't know because you're not in the markets like we are all the time. So um, once we pass three, we're um, looking at, um, or I beg your pardon, um, uh, on to four, um, we're then moving on to understand the assumptions that um, uh, our clients, or in this case, if we engage the city, has been using in the past, and we're always questioning all the assumptions. Again, easy for us to do because we're outsiders. And uh, so we're saying, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And um, on number five is the supplier piece. So at that point, we understand what quality is uh, to um, our engaged client. And um, we're then uh, going uh, to market with certain suppliers, and this is an important point in that this is not a, um, I, I, despite what I think our name suggests, this is not an internet or supplier free for all. It's a very selective process um, because we work with uh, most all the companies out there in the supply chain. Um, we pre-screen companies and based on the information because we understand what your quality requirements are um, we can bring in a very small number of companies that are in that top quartile that we're all looking for. And then those are the companies that compete for your business. So all kinds of things you need to be looking for in the supplier base. But at the end of the day, you really have to understand all these different areas like you understand your own business. And it goes way beyond the marketing material. Um, and that's our role. That's what we do. So uh, number six is uh, we reevaluate supplier relationships. Um, that's looking at who you're working with. Um, we actually would prefer that you continue to work with your existing suppliers, but that um, doesn't mean that'll be the case. It's all about what recommend recommendations you accept. And it's entirely about you. It's not about uh, uh, we're going to bring you information, but at the end of the day, you make the decision. and. Um, I think one of the benefits of the model uh, that we bring to bear on our client's behalf is that we're not paid by any suppliers ever, and that is a differentiator in the marketplace. Um, there are groups um, like uh, GPOs, uh, group purchasing organizations, great organizations, but they're, they receive discounts from suppliers, um, which is a covert method of being paid. Um, that's absolutely not allowed, and it's uh, in every one of our contracts that we cannot receive any remuneration aside from who we're engaged with. So while I don't think it removes all bias, it certainly removes the financial uh, bias, which is, I think, an important piece. Um, from there, um, going to market is, uh, is an important differentiator. Um, in that we're running specialized systems on all these different categories that we run. So typically um, in companies, in this market we're working with companies that are up to um, just over half a billion in gross annual sales in Colorado. Those companies are running typically kind of a generalist approach to all these different areas. and. Um, being able to be specialized in, in all these 200 plus areas is an important piece. Uh, negotiating better, um, I won't go into uh, detail there, but we're uh, doing everything we can to negotiate at a high level. And number nine, um, we encourage our clients to, once we um, submit a recommendation, then we encourage people to uh, move forward once they make a decision as quickly as they can with our support. So we're, we're there every step of the way implementing. Um, that is also a bit of a dif differentiator with some consulting firms and that often you'll receive um, a time and materials bill and then uh, and a recommendation and then that's the end of the engagement. We're engaged, 
throughout the process and then for the following two years. So um, the effort here again is to bend the cost curve long term on your behalf and make things run more efficiently. Um, that really is why people engage us. Um, and then lastly, um, and you may have done much of this already, but embedding in the culture um, the importance of what every, do every dollar should mean to any organization, all of us, and uh, how, many, how much work it takes to bring in additional revenues for each one of those dollars. So that is our process. I hope I didn't go into too much detail. Um, and next slide, please. So our findings for in looking at uh, data for the city of Inglewood broke into two groups. The, the first group are 15 different areas uh, that we were able to identify were large enough for us to um, execute projects. Um, and, um, the, and our estimate was based only on this, these 15 categories um, because the second group um, we were not able to uh, determine a, a number that we were comfortable with to be able to add that into our opinion of how many dollars that we might be able to recover. So does that make sense, how I described that? Or I'll say that again. So the first group, you could see some advantage, but the second group, you couldn't. Uh, the first group, we could attach how many dollars we were spending. So as an example, benefits insurance, we were able to uh, determine with a high degree of comfort, how many dollars you were spending in that area, and also see so that it quantitatively was you can you can figure the second group, but the second one you can't. S second one we could not um, could not attach a dollar amount. With further uh, uh, research, we certainly could, and with an organization of your size, we believe the second group um, is probably uh, we'll, we would probably find that you could engage us for those those areas, um, but they, it's, again, it's not included in the opinion. <coughs> and I wanted to mention there's a third group that's not on the slide, which is typically when we go to work on behalf of our clients, um, and as we're running these projects with uh, analytic teams on across the uh, supply chain, um, there's actually interconnectivity, as you might imagine, between these different areas. Um, and uh, so an example of that would be um, a fleet project, which is one that we identified here. Um, if we found that you were paying for uh, fuel cards, for example, for employees, and you weren't uh, 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 gaining rebates on fuel purchases, um, we would then be asking the question, what about the rest of your suppliers? How are you paying those, those folks? And that'll run upstream into a potential e-payables project where we can earn uh, pretty significant dollars. So normally in a rollout, we find other areas for your consideration. That's not included either in, in our numbers. Does that help? Um, yes. Okay, great. So um, you're going to need from us whether we want to go further into the second group, if that's going to be more time. Well, actually, what I would need from council after this tonight's presentation is whether or not you would want to see us bring forward an agreement. We do have an agreement sketched out with um, ERA that we'd like to bring forward should the council decide that this is something that would uh, be beneficial. And as staff, I'm telling uh, you, council, that this would be very beneficial to us. Again, even though it is contingent fee, uh, I can tell you that the work has been done uh, by this firm for me in the past. Um, and again, there really aren't a whole lot of other firms that do this work in the way that ERA does. I think they're the only one that does this type of work the way that they do it. There's a lot of firms that'll come in and just look at telecommunications. They'll look at utility payments that you make to like Excel Energy or something like that. But this particular firm rolls up everything in under one roof and they have all the expertise that they do. So that's why we brought this, to bring this forward to you tonight as an augmentation to the staff that we already have. Um, I can tell you the last company that I was with I had a manager and three buyers, and again, still having you know having ERA come in provided a tremendous benefit. And I haven't called them to find out you know what their overall um, savings has been, but I am sure that it's quite sizable. Did you conclude your presentation there? I did not. Um, I wanted oh. to share with you how many dollars, based on av averages um, across. In, in 
and similar organizations across the country that we've been able to recover in the past. And based on the first group, our estimate is that we would be able to recover in round numbers a million to a million and a half dollars per year. And again, I can't speak for the second group or any other areas we might be able to uncover. Uh, that's specific. Well, I would have to ask the numbers that we pulled down. I believe that was off of your um, your site, as I understand it. Good to go. Lots of money in town. So Sorry, we got Rick and then the other. Uh, so I guess the big question is, what is the fee for saving that money? Uh, we sh we share in savings equally over two years. Oh, I'm sorry. Take 95% of it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We share equally 50 50. Thank you. I got uh, Linda and then Lorette. So um, j this is really kind of more of a point of order just for the future. I, I'm, this isn't anything to do with you. Sure. But it would have been helpful to have a cover memo with this to know what the heck I was looking at. And I, I just didn't have time because I've been on this trip and I, I looked at it today. What, what is this? Why am I looking at this? This is really cool. Um, I think this is great. And so I'd like to see us go further. We probably have a lot more questions here. But in the future, I would love a little cover um, memo to tell me why I'm looking at this. Um, because I had no, I thought maybe you already contract with them, you're just updating us. And then a piece for the two of you would be to maybe even on our outline to say what our goal is with this presentation, whether you're going to ask us for our feedback or sure. whether we're going to, what, what are we going to do with it? Or is it just an update? That, that would cue me. That's the only piece. I, now I'm, I didn't know what it was here for, so now I'm sure. very excited. Yeah, and I apologize for that, Council. Uh, you know, in my absence last week due to the um, two things, vacation and, and a funeral, I apologize. I, I didn't get that done. Um, However, it is pretty complex. I think Mr. Jordan did an excellent job of, of simplifying the, the process, but for me to put that in a memo would have been rather lengthy. But yeah, it's I, we'll, we'll make sure that we do that in the future, Council. Thank you, Lorette. Thank you. Um, you said you worked with Eric before where was that at? He uh, said he worked with you before where? Did you guys work together before? Sure. Um, I didn't work directly with John. I worked with his company. Uh, uh -huh. I wor worked with him in northern Idaho, uh, a private company. However, um, I was reintroduced to ERA uh, when I went to the International City County Management Association conference last year. They were a vendor booth and uh, actually didn't realize and wasn't thinking at the time. I thought it was something only private companies did, but a large portion of their, of their client base is municipal-based. So uh, that's uh, where I came up, came up with that company's name was Ground Force Worldwide, Councilor Barentine. And then um, to Linda's question, I, I think it would have been helpful to have identified the problem first, I think, to kind of wrap our heads around why we were even looking at this. I mean, so that you would come to us and say, I believe we have a problem and our departments are not properly um, doing a process for their procurement, or I think it needs to be fixed, or I think we need outside help. Um, because I'm nothing against you, but <laughs> I think when you call a consultant and, and they're, they're in the business of this, that they're going to find something where we may be able to save some money, but there may be some other options on how we could have done that in-house, where we've never explored any of that. And um, that's just a statement. The second one is, I'm a little confused that you said that you, that uh, some of the costs that we were incurring on the second piece there were undeterminable. I'm, I'm a little concerned, like even on the first one, how is it undeterminable on our bank fees? I mean, some of these look like they'd be pretty easy things to look at, so I was a little con actually concerned, probably more for you than him, that those are in his words, undeterminable costs right now? Well, I think I can describe um, and answer very succinctly what has transpired here. Um, we gave Mr. Jordan and one of his partners, Pat Adams, um, information to access the city's financial portal. They used the financial portal and pulled off a lot of the information. So I think from what they've been able to do without actually consulting with city staff, it's pretty admirable. 
being able to identify the costs that we expend today and understand who those vendors are. We haven't engaged them, so we didn't actually bring them in to sit down with us and sit down with staff to determine how much money do we spend on the items that you see there for bank fees and everything else. If that were the case, I, I mean, we know exactly what we spend on these items, but we didn't provide that information to them um, to begin their analysis quite yet. So just using the city's new financial portal or transparency model that you've asked for, I think they've done a, a, an excellent job of being able to identify um, savings from that alone. The, did you determine an, a, a monetary amount of savings or just yeah. areas where you believe that there's savings? How much was that again? Uh, we, we break it into our range. Uh -huh. So we, and again, I, I just want to caution you that based on averages, we believe there's a range of a million to a million and a half per year. Um, but it, but that, but City of Inglewood is every every organization is unique. So, is that a decent predictor of what could happen? Mm -hmm. it, it should be, but they're averages. So I, mm -hmm. I just want to be clear about that. It could be higher. It could be lower. It could be significantly lower. Um, but that. <coughs> is part of what we do is we take the risk that we can create those dollars when we engage. You take the risk for what? We take the risk that there are, that there are dollars that we can identify and cash flows that we can recover for our clients. Uh -huh. um, we invent, given that we're contingency, we, the risk is almost all ours, not including uh, your, the internal time that we'll require of the city of Inglewood. Um, the um, uh, just the rest seems to be ours right now. If you can, merely going off of our um, website information, identify what you believe is close to a million to a million and a half of potential savings. We have a problem, and I wish we had um, explored some internal r resolutions and had it identified. Thanks for letting us know that we're overspending. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I would, um, I would, I would only um, suggest that the reason that uh, organizations have dollars that they can't recover is that they're lacking specialization, and that's the piece that we deliver. And, and Mayor, I will just answer to uh, address Councilmember Barentine's concern. Um, we did look internally. The best way to do that, though, would be to hire the analyst that he's talking about. And to do that would increase our overhead. And I'm simply not in the business of trying to increase the city's overhead when I know that we have a resource such as an outside company that can do the work by having to bring on more mouths to feed here at the city at this point in time. So um, again, their expertise is, is uh, very much help, helpful. Um, the problem is, is that we do not have the time and the ability internally with staff to be able to address these issues. And I appreciate your concern. I think that the problem is one that's not endemic or simply something that this organization experiences, as you've heard this evening. Um, even Fortune 500 companies and Fortune 50 companies that do business with ERA have problems with their purchasing and procurement due to um, patterns of whatever. It could be you know, laziness. Just because I have a relationship with Rita's um, vending, I'm going to buy from Rita all the time when there may be other alternatives out there. And so this is what I think ERA will help us with. No offense. Thank you. I'm going to move on to Rich. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to thank Eric for bringing this forward. Uh, <coughs> I don't see a problem with this. I see actually an opportunity for some savings at no cost to the city. You say, I, I, if you came to my, if you want to look at my budget and show me how to save some money for free, <laughs> you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm all for moving forward with this. Um, I just have a question. On the million to million and a half, um, we would see 50% of that, and you would see the other 50% of that. Actually, that is net of our fees. So that in those are the dollars, and there's a ramp-up period, as you might imagine. So, <coughs> pardon my voice this evening. Um, so it, uh, we can actually come in and execute all the projects all at once, but we would way overburden you mm -hmm. uh, with data requests and stakeholder meetings and so on. So we do our, uh, we design a strategy with our clients and uh, and that could run over a year to um, set up all those uh, projects and execute all those projects. Typical project is gonna take 
uh, about three to four months for us to have fully in place and implemented. Can go as long as six months. Um, as an example of that would be health and benefits. Um, so it takes a period of time to get everything ramped up. Once those were all implemented, and if we hit the averages, then we would be seeing those dollars. At the end of the two years when our engagement dropped out, then those dollars will double. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, but I appreciate your answer, and I, I see how that works. I, yep. I understand that. But when you're talking about a million to a million and a half savings, um, at the beginning, that would be split two ways. It's not that we're getting three million dollars savings over two years. Yeah, that's what. Um, do you understand what I'm? Yeah, I do, and and I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. It's um, we're estimating that we would generate a million to a million and a half dollars net to the city per year. At the at the end of, I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue. Please continue. Yeah. So, if the so if you remove the timing of starting up these projects, and let's say they all implemented at the same time, then for the next 12 months, let's say it was a million two, um, then the city would have an additional million two in that first year, another million two in the second year, and in year three you'd have 2.4 million. Additional dollars. All right. Does that help? Yes, that does. Yeah, thank I'm sorry, you. I wasn't clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, we got Amy, and then uh, I'll make some comments, and I'll come back to Lorette. Did you have something too? Lorette, did you have something to say? Um, I'm, I'm not calling on you. I'm asking you if you'd like to be added to the queue again. Yes yeah. or no? Thank you. Councilman Amy. Russell actually asked my question, but I would like um, to hear a little bit more about um, some of the other municipalities that you've worked with, and what kind of the range of um, savings that you found for the municipalities that you've worked with. Is it similar to what you're suggesting that we could save, or is it all over the place? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So we work with um, mun mun or municipalities across the country, um, and there are three that I can cite in Colorado. I don't have their specific uh, performance um, on with those three, um, but the uh, City of Rifle, City of Rifles School District was one, and the um, Colorado Springs School District number eleven, and Adams Twelve Five Star Five Star School District was the third that I pulled together. That's true. That's correct. Anything else for me? Thank you. Um, quick question for me is. Uh, through your process, is there any preference given to local suppliers, either statewide or in the local municipality you're working with? Yeah, that's a great question, particularly in Colorado, because um, so when we're, we're when we're baking our first report, which is the result of that qualitative and quantitative research that we do, um, we're gathering in that process what your preferences are. So that is part of the quality statement. Is if you have a, a preference. Or a requirement for, uh, you know, a company located here in Colorado. We get that regularly, regularly, um, or headquartered here in Colorado. Um, we've had that with uh, great regularity as well. So, um, and we just have. I can mention because we've. We, I have a sign off uh, with one of our clients, and they're doing a case study for um, for a pr uh, three projects that we did for it, uh, one of the tier one nonprofits. <laughs> Um, that might be helpful, and it's uh, Denver Botanic Gardens um, that we did, um, we worked with for I think about three or four years now. And uh, that was absolutely one of their um, strong preferences. And uh, we were, you know, it's, it's, we're happy to do that. I, I personally kind of enjoy having that requirement um, in most areas, not all. It wouldn't work with small package freight given that there's only two suppliers and they ain't here. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's up to you, entirely up to you. Um, Eric, do you think we would benefit from having an internal policy on local suppliers um, that we could cash out and then provide perhaps to someone like uh, them to mm -hmm. help us decide, make those types of decisions? Yeah, 
absolutely. Actually, in our current procurement policy that we haven't shared with them yet because we haven't engaged with them, um, it does it does uh, stipulate that we're in practicable. We should be using local vendors, in which we would. Um, that is something I know that we spend a lot of time doing. My experience with ERA in the past, again, I'm from the private sector. My boss had an affinity for some local companies in northern Idaho, and uh, actually just including them on that list of vendors uh, proved to provide more savings because they knew that they were having to compete. Um, even though we did have give them preference, they actually gave us better pricing as a result of ERA's engagement. So in some cases, that helps as well. So our, our internal policy probably now just states that we have a preference for local, right? right? But really what we need to probably do is start to quantify what that looks like, do you think, or no? I think that um, one of the things, I, I do agree with that. I think that would be helpful. Um, again, we're in possible. We try to purchase locally. Um, again, we're required to, to do the, the RFP route, uh, and in some cases, they're not the best. Um, but yeah, I think if we could uh, force that issue and, and write that in, I, I believe that uh, that could be done. Thank you. Um, and, and another question, I guess, is you said it was a two-year engagement, and so that 50% savings would uh, go over that two-year term. Uh, we would split the savings 50-50, and then after that two-year term, then we would save everything from all those deals, right? Unless we re-engaged you. Is you know, that how that works, or how does that work after the two-year term? You bet. Yeah, and, you know, and in some, and, and again, the t we're actually here for the long term, well beyond the two years, and with our process. So it really is about changing, bending the cost curve down, if you will. So in most areas, the savings and the dollars we create can continue over time. And one of the things that we really encourage uh, our clients to take advantage of is knowledge transfer from our analysts and teams to you. So we are uh, very interested in cross-training how we do what we do uh, with your team, and that is really what would uh, maintain those dollars over a long period of time. So again, let's say you turn us on to a vendor and we save a million dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, after a two-year period, we decide not to retain you any further. We can continue on with that vendor have to pay you anything, right? That's right. Yeah, and uh, that th a related point to that is you're the client for that vendor. Uh, we're not a middleman. So even though the reporting is set up electronically so that we can monitor all the purchasing, which is part of our process over the two years, um, yet the relationship is been between you and the suppliers, not uh, ERA. Thank you. Yeah, Thank absolutely. It continues on. I don't. I don't see how it's possible to. Can you keep saying it's a million five, then a million five the next year, and a million five the next year? So, if my refrigerator breaks and you help me buy a refrigerator and you've saved me, or we can quantify it and you've saved me a thousand dollars on that refrigerator. You saved me a thousand dollars on that refrigerator. Do you save me another thousand the next year on that same refrigerator? I mean, how? Once you come in and correct problems on procurement or you see where there is excesses or um, uh, economies that can be done, uh, they're saved for that year and then the, the base resets. And so it isn't, if you're saving us a million five and a million five and a million five, then that's because we're still doing stupid. I mean, I would assume we would learn from it and the next year there may be some economies that can happen but it wouldn't be at the rate of a million five, it would be less because we would have corrected the issues from the previous. Yeah, you know, I would only cautious, I would really caution you from looking at it uh, 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 that we're coming in and we're smart and you're not, because that is not the case. And oh no, that's not what I said. It, no, but you were saying but, we're But you, we're were you said, okay. And I, uh, I for just, expedient, again, I just, I for question, expediency please. sake. Just let him answer the question. Pardon me? Please go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say that the, the I think the fair comparison is that um, you're generalists and we're specialists, and it's an important okay. distinction because we're <laughs> there. There is, uh, as I um, indicated earlier, there is no secret sauce or nothing. Oh. Where there's nothing sp super smart about us. We're just specialized. Oh, I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. No, no, um, no problem. So he but mischaracterized I, what I was saying, and yeah, you yeah. you misunderstood. What you said was you'll save a million five this year. If we could find a million five, let's say you do. Yep. And then there's an assumption then that the second year you're saving us a million five. Yep. And then when 
Joe said, um, um, then if we don't retain you, we don't, and we keep that person we did a contract for, um, that goes back to the refrigerator thing. I don't owe you the thousand dollars for every year I have the refrigerator because I saved the thousand. Right. The same as if you put us with a company that saves us money and you go, hey, here's a better relationship for you. Here's my cut of it this year. Then are you saying you get a cut of it every year that we're saving money with that company? Um, no, it's only for the two years. Oh, it's so it is for the two years. Yes. So if you save us, if you if you buy that refrigerator, then then you get the thousand for two years. Right. Okay, that's correct. Then it makes sense when yeah, you yeah. say, if I save you a million five the first year, I get a million five the second year because it's all the same. Right. The baseline didn't reset. Yep. Okay, so just for that two years. So yeah, then yeah. that answer answers Joe's question that mm -hmm. after that two years, then you're not obligated to that, and the baseline would reset after two years. So even if we retained you, then we would start over, and if we were say saving a million five, then we would be now talking about a million five less, and then you would go after some other kind of things that you think you could save. You know, I, you, you actually did answer my question. I yeah, appreciate okay. that. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. But the million five doesn't go on forever. It just went on artificially because that's part of your contract. Right. Right. We're not actually saving another million five the second year. You're yeah. just getting a cut of that million five for two years. Right. And All right. Let me, let me clarify one thing. Maybe this will be helpful because I, I may not be as clear as I'd like to be. But the, um, we're actually changing how you do business because we're figuring out exactly what you're doing in all these different areas. And then we introduce suppliers in many cases that are going to be a better fit for the city. And, um, and it is not based on applying competitive tension on, on the supply chain. We really want to find the very best fit for the city, and that's why the costs don't go up. They, it will over time, but it doesn't go up for, should not go up for many years. D does that help? Is that helpful? Well, just one other, one other piece of that <coughs> is yep. if it's, if you save me that thousand dollars on that refrigerator, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that, yep. and I give you 50% of that thousand, yep. but you're going to go ahead and take a percentage of that thousand dollars for two years, mm -hmm. then I've given you a thousand dollars. Yeah, and let me try. Yeah. Let me try another way of describing that. Let's say you were. Um, let's see. Your example is: I saved you a thousand for buying that refrigerator. So, for for us to do that, and that's a completely legitimate example. Um, <coughs> you're probably buying forty re refrigerators a year. We've gone back and tracked your 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 spending patterns for those forty refrigerators. We go to market with that number of refrigerators per year and then if we saved a thousand for each refrigerator per year then we would split that savings and then after in the third year you'd still have the same suppliers involved and then you would gain the thousand did i make it better or worse at the end of the two years you get a hundred percent but i think um, it's, it was asking a, a question like similar. It's, it's whether it's a closed or an open system. So we, the, the savings that we accrue over time isn't based on the past years. It's based on the next year when we have to do something similar. Yes. So it's the Great numbers point. of them. If, you, we were, if we were, let's say we were doing a fire department, which we aren't anymore, and we were buying a one, one truck that we would only buy once in the 15 years in the future, that would not really count as a savings because it's not really in the same kind of vein, right? Well, or may we'd save somewhat on that, obviously, but it's the million and a half is built. If, if I'm, I want to know if this is true. In my thinking, mm -hmm. is based on the future kinds of purchases we have to continue to make, not on the refrigerator. I just that one refrigerator that you bought in the past. Yeah, right. so it would be, it I would be all of the things. It would be the paper products. It would be the health care and the changes. Right. Um, right. right, all of those things. It it could be depending on what you chose. Absolutely. Um, the salt or whatever. And there's one point you're bringing up. Something. Yeah, and it's it's based, it's incremental, and it's based on quantity. So um, we count every single product or service that you buy during that engagement period. And if there is a successful project for that area, we would have your 
past spending for that refrigerator mm -hmm. we would have negotiated a better price on that refrigerator so we have that delta and then in the future if you bought that refrigerator that would calculate the savings so your spending could go up and down and we adjust for that but we count every single item you buy and I mean pencils paper clips everything it's and part of that is what we encourage people to transfer to their staff because that is a, a, a strata it's a tactic for reducing cost because it is pretty unusual so I, I, I want to applaud you for kind of bringing this forward. I think it's a really next step in saving for us. I, I also, um, I mean, I've been involved in two organizations that, that did this. It's painful, too. I mean, there's no, there is a cost to people of doing things differently, and my big brother's telling me what kind of pencils I can buy, no kind of thing. But um, I think it's a smart way to start to analyze, and I don't know if this is the right company or others, but I really am thankful that you're willing to take it this next step. Thank you, Steve. The way I understand is the first two years is where you're going to really help us get our spending under control, or I should say find the better deals and the strategies on how to get the better deals. After the second year is complete, then your particular position becomes more of a, and, and you started talking about it and then you got interrupted it becomes more of a coaching type of position where you're helping us keep on track, uh, continue to, to use the strategies that you've taught. And if we're having, uh, let's say, a, a new XYZ type of product that we have to use, you can help us with finding appropriate vendors to get the best deals. I, is that correct? Well, let me, um, much of it is, but let me be more clear on a few points. Um, so, and make sure that we have this two-year time frame. Um, I, ca I can uh, describe that accurately. So you have the typically three to six months per batch of projects um, that we execute when there's no, sh no sharing at all because we don't know if we have a successful project and what those dollars might be. At the end of that, and once the project is fully implemented, then we start sharing, and we're monitoring monthly or quarterly, depending on the size of the project, typically monthly. Um, uh, but our analysts are very much engaged over those two years of monitoring during the saving sharing piece. Um, that also is when we would be encouraging you to take advantage of knowledge transfer from our teams to yours, and then at the end of the two years, plus those three to six months for us to uh, complete the project, then that engagement for that group of projects would drop out. And then um, you would continue on with the way that um, those categories um, had been modified over those two years and handful of months. If you chose to have a still oversee certain areas or all of those areas, we can negotiate that. But it's at a very different arrangement. And everything that um, we have uh, discussed with um, Eric and Kathy has been the two-year engagement only. And by the way, that is the, the typical, is that there's no need for ongoing uh, monitoring on our part. Does that help that I? Yes, that answers right. my question. Okay. Thank you. I'm pretty supportive of this idea. I uh, would like to see this move forward. I guess the only real question mark in my mind is um, do we want to move forward and um, see the agreement come forward? Are there other companies out there that do the same thing? Uh, you know, can you give us some process on moving forward here? Sure, and typically when we do professional service agreements um, such as this for kind of a specialized engagement, we do look for other firms. Um, and again, like I mentioned, there are companies that do similar work, but there are no companies that under one roof are able to look at all these aspects. Um, we've been speaking, I said we, myself, um, pr prior to this, I've talked to Clifton Larson Allen, which is a local accounting firm, which actually they're national, but their local office does um, telecommunication audits. Um, they have another um, side of their house that does the utility audits, but it's not, again, not procurement such as this. Um, 
as it's been presented. So this really is a niche that these guys, that this firm fits, that um, there really aren't any other companies that do holistically this type of work. So no need for an RFP process in this type yeah, of situation? Yeah, I, I don't believe, I don't believe that's necessary. See this coming forward at our next meeting? Um, it could be prepared for your next business meeting, yes, which would be uh, August 1st. Thank you. Uh, Linda? Uh, well, I, that helps. I, I have a question then related to this because when I've been involved in these kinds of things in the past, it's been very specific to some areas. There's sometimes a, a collection of areas, so it's a big thing to do everything under a city's roof. So, I mean, a city, I guess a school system does have kind of the right, but maybe not in the same way we're, we're doing servicing fleets we're doing. I mean, so I guess I would want to know a bit more about the cities that you've served that were real municipalities, not just a school system, although I do think there's similarities there. But how, how do you develop expertise in all those different areas? In all the areas that we work in or all the different industries that we work um, in? <coughs> I, yeah, I, I guess in all the different categories a city would represent for procurement and for contracts. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great question. Are experts and it's in each of those? Or? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, in most of the areas we work in, um, they are uh, what we call non-core spending, so fleets and merchant card fees and all this. And they're common across all di many different industries. So while there are some areas that are um, uh, industry specific, mm -hmm. there aren't many. Uh, so it is an example, we do medical supplies. So all the pharmaceuticals and so on, we do food service and those are absolutely specialized. Um, but beyond that, out of the 44 categories, I think about 40 are, are common to many different industries. Yeah. Okay. Other questions or comments? Again, Council, it uh, sounds like we will s uh, see this coming forward at our next regular business meeting. Um, sir, thank you for uh, coming down and joining us this evening. Um, at this point, I would like to move on to agenda item four, the lead facility polling topics discussion. Um, uh, again, Finance Administrative Services Director Kathleen Wrinkle is here um, to present lease facility polling topics. You know, I know that um, we were hoping to see some questions, but I think we heard um, from our consultant that they didn't want to release the questions, and rather uh, the council will be looking at uh, more broad topics. Right. We've brought the topics forward. The questions themselves, we, we the say professionals uh, asked us not to release because then it could invalidate the results that we see. We want to make sure that you've got results that you can actually work from and they're honest results for the community. So with that, we have some uh, topics. We've got screening. Then specifically, we'll ask about the $27 million bond with the property tax increase for the headquarters and their feelings about that, whether they will provide a pro bond message and describe five items and ask them to comment on that. Uh, we've got the informed final test on the police headquarters, kind of a three-way choice, and this gives us an idea of what type of funding they might like to support for the, for the uh, police station. And then we'll ask a question about marijuana sales. And again, a three choice, keep it at the way it is, add recreational, eliminate all sales. So with those topics, we wanted to see if there was anything else you would like to add or ask. Sure, we can do council uh, questions and comments here. Uh, keep in mind that um, council, this is really
really serving kind of two purposes for us. Uh, this is, I believe, replacing the citizen survey. Yes, it is. Uh, and so we are asking very broad questions, but it also is acting as a tool for us to gain some more information to make a decision on uh, potential bond issues for the police station. So that's why I think you're seeing both sort of nature of questions. Questions or comments from the council? Uh, Linda? Um, I, I like these categories. I think they're, they're helpful. Um, in the area that, uh, especially one through six, if we could take a look at the National Cities Survey that we did before, to see if there's some way we, I mean, we shouldn't maybe ask them exactly the way they did, but to find something that could tie in so we can see some comparison a and little and bit. And we did. We okay. gave them that survey from the prior time we did it, the format, and they used that to help develop those questions. Right. So we're actually matching the language a as lot. As much as we can, okay. mm -hmm. without being too wordy and taking too long. Yeah, some of them were very wordy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Questions or comments? Uh, Amy? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, these are going to be asked uh, over the phone. Yes. Correct? Yes, they are. Um, I'm just wondering about, because really what we're wanting to get at here is the police facility mm -hmm. question, really. And I'm wondering if the police questions are too far down the list. What if somebody doesn't want to commit to answering all questions? They said they weren't going to count the surveys if they didn't complete all the questions. Right, right. right. Okay. They're they're figuring they're going to have to do about a thousand to get 300 people to participate. The uh, plan is to have the questions so it only takes about no more than 10 minutes of their time and that's why some of the questions up in front are abbreviated and then we get into the meat of the police department, okay. police building. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I actually agree with Amy and um, and I do, I do object to the one on marijuana. We have two initiatives on both sides, and I think we need to stay out of that. And, and I personally feel this is way too long. I guarantee you, even if I start, I mean, I'm to the point where I don't even answer the phone anymore, especially for research. But if, I, if they take longer than three minutes, I'm done. And I think this is way too long. it necessarily bothers me um, I don't know I'm well, yeah. I, th I think it's if you don't mind me interjecting um, I think it's a little more core towards what the environment of ultimate question is of whether or not we should go to a VO bond you know support for the school district can also give us some level of uh, give us some I information about how supportive they might be of a VO as well correct I don't think the school bond question should be on there. They're already going to put it on there, and we, we shouldn't be messing with that. I don't think we should be messing with issues that are potentially going to be on the ballot from citizen initiatives. You're correct, Amy. This intention was to go ahead and um, find out whether there was any support for the uh, doing the $27 million. We don't even have any information except for the amount of money. So... Uh, whether somebody's going to support a school bond issue or not is going to give us little information considering past elections on whether they're going to pass that one. So I don't think that that's, that's valid. And as a matter of fact, I think you're just reminding them that there's more money going to be coming out of their pockets as it is. And I, and I think that it's way too long. It's a presidential year, and I'd be surprised how many people continue to <laughs> answer their phones with all of the political races that are going on. So... I wouldn't for doing it this year anyway, but th that's my two cents. Um, Steve and then Rick, and then Lois. Okay. Um, I would say when it comes to the school bond question, um, I think it's kind of important that it's in there because what we're trying to gauge is people's appetite for a tax increase, and if, if they say yes to a tax increase, which one are they most... Uh, in favor of bringing forward or both bringing forward. So I think it's a very valid type of question. When it comes to, uh, you know, 10 minutes, um, on surveys like this, frankly, I have no problem spending the 10 minutes to answer these questions because they, they uh, relate to my community and, and relates to my pocket directly. Um, and the other part of it is that 
if if a person chooses not to finish all ten questions so be it we're looking for folks that are engaged in our community and the contract is that they will deliver us a certain number 300 300 or so uh, completed surveys and uh, that's the information that we need so I'm I'm actually quite in favor of how this looks as a general type of setup so thank you thank you mm -hmm. Rick. yeah I'm gonna uh, say that I, I Steve and Rita and Brett. I know that's weird. <laughs> I don't know. You're up. Doesn't in the agree air. with you. You're up in the air. <laughs> no, I, 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 I personally don't don't feel I need the school bond question in there. For me personally, it's just this is about the city, not about the school bond. The school's doing their own thing. They're also having their own surveys. They're also having people call, and I, I just like to keep it towards the municipal. What we're about, and not cross the line. That's my, my personal. But I also agree that this company has promised 300 or so uh, results, and it's up to them to get them. It's not up to, you know, would I answer 10 minutes? I have before. I've, I've answered other long surveys that I thought were worth my time, and then there's others I hung up on right away. So um, it's just. Spoke with somebody, and, we're, and Tony's going to put this out on next door that these calls may be coming. Uh, please, if you get one of these calls, it's about our city. If you could give us the time, that'd be great. Uh, who did I talk to about that? Mr. 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 Robinson. So uh, if if that gets done, we we do some preempting and get our community ready for these. Those that are privileged to get these calls and, and go through it, will know that they're helping the city as well. So um, although I don't for the school bond part in there or the school list, I do want to go forward and uh, I like all the rest of the questions. Uh, so I, um, the, the school bond one for me would be important to have in there only as a flag to people, like, which I think is honest. It's a more honest kind of thing. thing. But th this is probably going to come up too. So we're asking our question in the context of them also for those that are in the end of the districts having to make that choice as well. And I would prefer they kind of know both of those rather than just kind of, oh, well, if I'd known I was going to do both, I might have said no on one and the other. I, that would be my reason. I have a little bit of a concern that uh, I'd like to say, could we be collaborative with the school district to say, would you prefer we not put it on? Or do you think it would be uh, disadvantageous for them in the long run? And I want to be a player with them in this. Um, it's not, I, I don't know. And, but I do know that these kinds of surveys have a huge impact people's perception in the future. Only a thousand people will be called, but three hundred they're gonna get. And it does then put the word out there. So I wanna be careful about what we're saying and, and have it be as open and, and as much information to citizens. I don't think this is too long either, I really don't. I think it'll go fast. I've done surveys like this before. And, um, you know, I'm supportive as written. I, I generally trust that these uh, professionals generally know how to put these type of survey questions together. Um, I heard some concern about um, the marijuana question and some others. Did you have something to I'll come to you next. Um, and uh, so I guess I just want to gauge if uh, we have consensus on this uh, as written or if others support um, uh, removal of the school question or the marijuana question. Lorette? I'm a little concerned about Tony Alnardi. If we're not if we're not putting the questions out specifically, I'm concerned about this being put out on next door, like like that because it makes it look as if the city's taking a position on it, and I don't want people speculating on it or asking, having this back and forth while the survey might be going on. That might happen on its own, but I don't want the city to participate in doing that. Is Tony asking or telling folks it's a it's a PD issue or?
to. I, I think I generally agree. Certainly don't want to put it out there that it's a, you know, necessarily a PD issue. I don't want to prime the, the folks before they uh, receive the questionnaire either. But you know, if it's simply, hey, please participate, I feel like that might be appropriate. Um, read it, and uh, we may have to pick this conversation up in the next room here. It is 7.30 now. So we'll do Rita, okay. and then uh, perhaps we'll pick it up in the next room. I disagree that she should put it out at all. If we're looking for a non-skewed um, deal, then we need to not put it out there. Then whoever gets called answers and answers the questions. Because if you put it out on next door, you pick up certain people. There are not everybody in the cities on next door. Thank you. Amy, you want to comment real quick before we go? Uh, I think it's a um, Joel's question. I wonder, Eric, if you think we should reach out to Wendy Rubin, the superintendent, and see if she has any say. She wants us to leave it off. She wouldn't mind if it has it on, just to kind of get her feel for it. You know, again, I just think it has substantial value for what we're trying to do. You know. Yeah. Is it okay if we pick this up under member choice in the other room here? You guys okay with that? We can give that direction. Okay, thank you. Okay. We're going to adjourn, and we'll pick this up just in a few minutes next door. Yes, five minutes, please. Thank you.